up wild cards welcome back to the channel if you're new here this is wild card journeys i'm your host eric and i hit the road to make videos about the paranormal various urban legends or whatever i might encounter out there on the road now if that's your kind of traveling welcome to the journey now today i'm in texas and we're visiting the texas prison museum now i was a correctional officer for five years for the arizona department of corrections and when i heard about this place i knew i had to come check it out the next time i'm in texas so let's take a journey Okay, here we are, about to go into the museum. I wanted to really quick check this out. They have a guard tower. How cool is that? There's even a little mannequin. You can't see him from this angle, but there's a mannequin in there waving at you. <laughs> I like that. Now, let's check out the museum. a model display of the walls unit. Huntsville Prison. Drove by this on the way into town. A little bit of history about it. I thought this was interesting. Famous Texas inmates. This one surprised me. David Crosby. Apparently he had a lot of issues with drug possession and illegal weapons in Atlanta's in prison in Texas. March 21st, 1986. He entered the Wynn unit where he labored in the mattress factory and worked with the Wind Rodeo Band. This one also I found kind of interesting, Juanita Phillips, AKA Candy Barr. Uh, long story short here, she's basically the girlfriend of Jack Ruby, the guy that shot Oswald. And they say some conspiracy theorists believe that she knows who really killed JFK. We'll never know. So, this is one that I was actually pretty impressed by. This guy wrote the famous song, The Midnight Special, but he did time not only here at Huntsville, Angola, and Louisiana, and New York, Rikers Island. Okay, those are like some of the worst in the country. Bang. And here's a mock-up of an actual cell. You know, I gotta say, I've, it's roomier than a lot of the ones I've, I've seen before. Roomier than a lot of the ones we had where I worked, I gotta say. Very, very cool. I can appreciate the artwork in a lot of these items. <laughs> and this would be the Captain Joe Bird Cemetery where uh, it would bury uh, inmates who were unclaimed, aka Peckerwood Hill. Grim, very grim. And you can't have a prison museum without information about the gangs. It goes hand in hand. This is mostly about the tattoos. I found this quite interesting. Basically, it was saying that the prison gangs started in California, the earliest one being the Mexican Mafia. Then as they branched out, other gangs were created to protect themselves from the larger Mexican Mafia prison gang. Quite interesting, actually. Very interesting. Of course, we got some inmate made weapons. So it's not just weapons, but it's also contraband they're not allowed to have. Yeah, that one, whatever that is behind the hammer, that is some Wolverine looking action right there. Nasty. That looks like a homemade gun in the back. Very cool. And here we have furniture. All of this furniture was made by inmates over the years. This I thought was kind of cool actually. Not bad at all. Some more inmate art. Now from what I understand about this one, uh, inmate created it. It was technically contraband so he couldn't keep it, but uh, he did su such a good job on it, they let him send it home to his family, but only if he made another one here in the museum. So, it's Prisonopoly. I wouldn't mind playing that. 
This is a match cross, handmade by an inmate from the days when matches and tobacco were legal and sold in the unit commissary, made completely out of matches. Wow. Now this is the one I've been waiting to see. <clears throat> this is an entire chest set made out of soap. So you have the correctional officers on one side with the inmates on the other. And if you look, all the inmates are carrying shanks. <laughs> and of course the officers are not. Wow. You know, I can appreciate the artwork in this. It's, that's, that's clever. You gotta say that's clever. From the barber shop. You know, I never, only got my hair cut by an inmate one time when I worked at the prison. And that was enough for me. Just, I don't know. He wasn't using a razor or anything. It was regular clippers. But, yeah, one time was enough for me. And here we have... This is grim, but really interesting. The various forms that they used to execute inmates. Uh, it says here, three very different forms of execution have been used since the founding of the Texas prison system in 1849. The first form of execution was hanging, which took place in the counties rather than Texas prison system from 1849 to 1924. The second was the electric chair, Old Sparky, which was used from 1924 to 1964 to execute 361 men. The third and last form is lethal injection. The three-step process was used from 1982 until 2012. Her and Yokoman was the last person to be executed during this method. A one-step lethal injection process continues to be used since 2012. And there it is the electric chair they executed 361 inmates in. That chair right there. The, nick, the uh, inmates nicknamed it Old Sparky. And they said when it was used they called it riding the thunderbolt. Now this is kind of interesting right here. Uh, it says when the warden gave the signal the executioner threw the switch sending 1800 volts through the condemned man's body knocking him unconscious and paralyzing his brain. The voltage was then reduced to 500 volts momentarily to prevent his body from catching on fire or exploding. The execution would then take the voltage up to 1300 volts and then back to 500 volts where it was held for a minute to, mix, to maintain a paralysis of the brain and a suspension of his body's life supporting functions. When the electric generator purred to a halt, the physician would step forward, place a stethoscope on the man's chest, then turn to the warden and pronounce him dead. I wonder if this place is haunted. These are remnants from the Huntsville Prison Rodeo. Uh, it ran from 1931 until 1986. 55 years, that's a pretty good run for any rodeo, I'd say. There's a little film, so some of it. Wow. I wouldn't mind watching a prison rodeo. Texas Prison Rodeo belt buckles. That's actually pretty dang cool. I kind of like the cap here, actually. That one, that's a little bright for my taste, but that cap is pretty dang cool. And I guess that's what they wore. Okay, so since this is a paranormal channel as well, and there are so many items, weapons here, and the electric chair that have so much connection with death and mayhem and everything else, I was wondering if the employees ever saw any ghosts here or anything. So I asked the employee at the counter, and he was like, oh yeah. He said he himself one time was in here, but there was nobody on this side of the museum. There were people were on the other side. And out of the blue, he heard a noise. When he turned around, it was this rocking horse going back and forth by itself. He said no one is around to have uh, pushed in or anything. 
and yeah, he and other employees have seen strange things. Tapping on the glass counter when he was up there. Uh, also in the corner over here, he said people have heard uh, like keys jangling, which kind of makes sense because more of the items over here related to the correctional officers and not the inmates. But uh, yeah, so I would love to do an investigation here sometime. And of course, you got some t-shirts. Definitely going to pick up one of these. Can't have a museum without the merchandising, right? Very interesting. A lot, of, a lot to do with the Masons here. A lot of Mason symbols and items, merchandise related to the Freemasons. Interesting. All the woodwork, what I'm told, is made by inmates. The leatherwork. I'm trying to say if I want a hat. I don't know if I want a hat. Very cool. Definitely picking up a mug. Five bucks for a mug, you can't beat that. at the legendary Mr. Hamburger, home of Old Sparky. So they have the original, they got the killer, they got the King Kong, they got the warden, and the one I'm getting is Old Sparky, a deep fried patty, lettuce, tomato, pickles, ranch, Texas, and July sauce. I thought was unique about this place is they have a burger named Old Sparky, which is what I ordered, named after the electric chair that they kill dreams of twin inmates in. So that was interesting. And also because they're literally down the road from the Huntsville unit, uh, they say a lot of inmates come straight here after getting released for their first meal of freedom, as well as a lot of death row inmates order their last meal from here. I don't think I'd want to know if I'm cooking someone's last meal. That would be a little trip. This is Old Sparky, named after the electric chair. And it's basically a chicken fried beef patty, and then they have a secret hot sauce on there that they call Texas in July, which if you've been in Texas in July, you know that's quite foreboding. So, it's Old Sparky inside of Mexican street fries. Wish me luck. And there you have it, the Texas Prison Museum, located just outside Huntsville, Texas. This place was fascinating. I wish I had more time to stay today, but I got to catch a flight soon. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit like below, comment, or better yet, subscribe. You can catch all my videos as I hit the road for the paranormal, various urban legends, or whatever might be out there on the road. Thank you again, and we'll see you on the journey. congratulate a dear friend of mine. As a lot of you know, I was a correctional officer with the Arizona Department of Corrections for several years. And one of my dear friends, I'm not going to say her name because uh, CEOs have to maintain a low profile on social media, but you know who you are. I know you know who you are. But a uh, dear friend of mine recently retired from the department. I couldn't be more proud or impressed. Congratulations. And not just for me, but for so many of us that served with you, I wanted to say you are one of the finest, bravest officers I've ever had the honor of working with. Even though you do talk a lot of shit. You know you do. Don't even deny it. But uh, congratulations again on your retirement. That is awesome. We'll see you soon. Take care, everyone.